Good morning. And welcome to worship on this third Sunday after Pentecost and Pride Weekend Sunday at Christ Lutheran Church in Blaine, Minnesota. If you are a visitor with us, whether in person or online, we say a special welcome to you. Whatever brings you here, wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome here. And do take a moment today to let someone you know from our LGBTQIA community that you care about them in these tumultuous times and will be there to support them come what may. It is indeed Pride Day every day. It is a bit cooler today from last Sunday, but any Sunday of the summer, please do not hesitate to keep the air flowing around you if you need to, and if ever you need to remain seated, please feel free to do that as well. We say thank you to Sherry Kraber today for bringing a special word. We say thank you again to musicians who keep us singing in this time of transition. And thank you to all who are returning the, fire, the flowers to our chancel as well. At this time, I wish to invite our call committee chair, Bob Deline, forward to bring a brief update for you. And then after that, Council President Mark Bacigalupo will also bring an update from the church council. Bob. Good morning. Uh, my name is Bob Deline, and I'm a member of uh, our call committee who is calling a senior pastor here to Christ Lutheran. And just wanted to give you a, a quick brief update. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, the call process is going very, very well. We, um, we have three very excellent, very strong candidates. Um, we're into our second round of interviews. Um, and again, we've narrowed it down to these three. And they're just, they're, again, they're tremendous. Um, at this point, we are checking references, and uh, we're revisiting the interviews, which we recorded, thankfully, um, which was uh, um, just very, very helpful. Um, so we're putting together our notes and our thoughts and our ideas. We're going to be meeting again um, this Wednesday, the 29th, uh, to go over those things, um, and again, after uh, having checked our references and and dotting all our I's and crossing all our T's and checking all our boxes. Um, so we are in a good position to move forward. Um, I also would like to thank the congregation for its patience. Uh, this is a very long, very uh, tough process. Um, it, just, it just takes time. And so we thank you for, for your understanding with that. We want to make sure that we're doing uh, every little bit that we can and that we are bring in the best possible person here to Christ Lutheran. Um, part, of, uh, part of what I wanted to do this morning, too, was to thank the, the call committee. Um, and uh, I know that their names have been mentioned before, but I think it's important to, to mention them again. Um, members are Cassie Christian, uh, Don Helmstetter, Lori Daly, Matt Jensen, Nat Jukums, and Sherry Craver. And as I was saying last uh, service, if you get a chance to, to, all the group has done a lot for this process, but if you get a chance to thank Sherry Kraber, she, um, as I also mentioned last service, uh, <laughs> she's been our communication Yoda. She has been just phenomenal about getting information out to us and keeping us on track. Um, I unfortunately, at the beginning of the, of the call process, uh, after the transition team was done, um, I got pneumonia pretty bad, and, and Sherry didn't even hesitate. I don't even know if I would have been doing that, that I would have done nearly as good a job. She's, she's phenomenal. And uh, I, uh, one of the things I also said last service was, if you're not quite sure who Yoda is, which is possible, um, I would very much liken her to our communication, Winston Churchill. So she has just done a, a great job. So if you get a chance, please give her an extra thank you. So we will keep you up to date as we proceed with as much as we can share. Uh, confidentiality is uh, critical um, when we're going through this process. So, um, but we will, we will share what we can when we can 
And you can always contact me if you have any questions. I'd be more than happy to, to talk with you and, and communicate whatever I can to you about our process. So thank you. Good morning. Good to see you all. And just like to say thank you to, to Bob, Sherry, and, and the entire call committee for all the work that they're doing for us. Um, they've got a great, great process set up, and I can't wait to see who the candidate is. Um, so I'm speaking to you today because it's the first Sunday after our uh, June council meeting, and we indicated that we'd give you a brief update after each of those. So I'll start out a little bit on the financial side. First of all, saying thank you to all of you for everything that you give to this church in terms of your finances, your time, uh, and your talents as well. Uh, for our um, Sowing the Seeds of Growth campaign that we did last spring, or this spring, uh, we're now at $113,175, so thank you very much if you were able to increase your commitment to the church this year. It'll help uh, tremendously. Uh, through May, in fact, we're doing very well. We're a little bit below what our plan is for income, but we're also below where our plan is for expenses. In fact, we've taken in about 412000 year to date. We've spent about four hundred. so we're in very good shape uh, from that standpoint. Relative to the 60th anniversary appeal, we have a balance in there now, meaning actually in the bank of about $167,000. About 4,700 of that is designated to use to pay down the mortgage uh, yet. And the balance of that is really geared towards the fellowship hall and youth area and that remodeling uh, that we'll be doing. Um, I think hopefully in July we'll probably reestablish a, a task force to, to look at what we really want that to look like. Um, I don't recall who all was on that. If you were on that previously, you're certainly welcome to continue, or if you have an interest, let me know in serving on that. But relative to that, we have now become aware of some um, water type issues within that fellowship hall. You know, that's an old part of the building, 1977, I think, is when that was built. So we have a bid from one contractor at this point to take care of those issues. It came in at about 50,000. We're going to get two more bids uh, before we decide what to do. Hopefully we will have those and we'll address those in um, July and then let you know uh, where that, where that, um, uh, that ends up. Um, we also, in addition to the call committee, you know, we have a hiring team looking for a new uh, music director. They continue to, uh, to go through the hiring process, in fact, or I mean the interviewing process. They have a, a second interview, I think maybe two more interviews here this week. Um, so they're still working through that, that process there. Um, also, starting in September with our new uh, education year, there's a little bit of a change that will occur with our youth programming. Uh, we'll start a process that looks somewhat like Logos used to look uh, for the youth on Wednesday evenings. I think it's a two-hour program from 5.30 to 7.30. And it's, it's focused on um, service to others. So the, the youth will learn about that, but they'll actually do it. They'll actually do service projects during that evening within the church, within the neighborhood, and they'll look at opportunities globally as well. They will have a large group gathering here for about a half hour in addition, then a small group breakout where they're doing Bible study uh, and a mealtime to begin that process. So lots of volunteers involved and probably still needed there. If you have an interest in serving that area, certainly talk to um, Sarah uh, Q about that. The ELC task force, remember that's the group uh, put together to deal with uh, looking for someone to lease our space where the early learning center uh, preschool was. That advertisement went out, I think maybe three weeks ago, let's say, uh, they've had one group inquire about it, um, nothing solid there, but continuing to advertise that and look for possibilities of uh, people to or companies to partnership there. Council minutes should now be posted on the, on the back wall again, and in addition to that, 
Um, I think Savannah's working on a way for you to indicate if you'd like to receive a copy of those minutes uh, electronically. Um, so I think maybe over the next month or so that you should see that happening as well. So that's your update. Any questions or discussion you'd like to have about relative to these items or others for that matter, please don't hesitate to contact myself or anybody on council uh, to discuss anything that you may want to. So thank you again. Thank you very much, Bob and Mark. Congregation will please rise for the pride blessing. Today is the Sunday we put the spotlight on our siblings in Christ who identify as a part of the LGBTQIA community. We as a church see you, support you, and love you every day and not just today. Let us pray. Child of God, who shows their true colors to the world and have met hatred in return, know that you are loved. Child of God, whose true self is hidden from the world, know when you are ready to shine that you are loved. Child of God, know that God sees you, hears you, knows you, and loves you. Know that you are beautifully and wonderfully made. Know that you are and will be loved. Know love and know that you are a child of God forever. Amen. God was never angry. God was not against me. God was never far away. And God's not disappointed, God's not keeping score, and God's not judging my mistakes. God is light, God is love. Do not fear, for God's with us. God is good, God is grace. God will never hide her face, cause God is
God's in the mystery. God is always with me. I was lost, but now I'm found. Everything I once thought, blinded by the love. I see so clearly now. God is in the mystery. God is Of all hearts. You call us to obey you and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. It's time for our children's message, and I'd like to invite any child of God who would like to come up for our children's message today. And if you are worshiping online, you can just scoot a little bit closer to your screen. Hi, everyone. Oh, my goodness. Well, today, 
<laughs> Anna's celebrating because today is a very special day at church called Pride Sunday. And today is a day that we remember that God gave us a job. And that job is to make sure we lift up the stories of our LGBTQIA2S plus siblings in Christ. So I'm going to have you all look up at that screen over there or over there and look at that person on the screen. Can, does anyone think they can tell me what kind of job that person has? Yes. A pastor, you are right. That is a pastor. They're wearing the stole and they're doing communion. That's right. That is Pastor Anita C. Hill. And Anita C. Hill is part of the LGBTQIA2S plus community. But here's something really sad. Not too long ago, they weren't allowed to be pastors. People like Anita weren't allowed to be pastors. Isn't that, isn't that sad? Well, Anita was born in Louisiana in 1951, and she went to a whole bunch of school for a long time, and eventually she ended up in Minnesota working at a church. And because she was really determined, and because the people of her church were allies and were, were really determined for her, she ended up becoming a pastor in 2001, even though it was against the rules. There were thousands of people there. In fact, our very own pastor was there. You might want to ask her about it later. And it was very cool, but there were some people that were really angry about it. But because of Anita and other people like her, things changed. And eventually, in 2009, pastors were allowed to be LGBTQIA2S+. And now, there are over 350 ELCA pastors who are a part of that community. Isn't that cool? All right, let's pray together. Hey, God, thank you for Pastor Anita and for all the people who supported her and support our siblings in Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. Today's gospel comes from Luke, the ninth chapter, verses 51 through 62. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, 
I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Good morning. My name is Sherry Kraber, and my pronouns are she, her. Today's scripture text talks about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. People are telling Jesus, I will follow you. And Jesus replies by telling them that they have to let go of their old practices and start anew. What does being a Christian mean today? How do we follow Christ and act like he commanded us? What old practices do we need to discard in order to be disciples? Remember his greatest commands. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. With this in our minds and hearts, Let's talk about our LGBTQ plus neighbors, family, and cherished friends. According to a February 2022 Gallup poll, the percent of US adults identifying as something other than heterosexual has doubled from 3.5% to 7% in the last 10 years. And in the 18 to 25 year old population, 21% identify as LGBTQ. This is one in five. It's highly likely that you know someone who identifies differently. I have known people who identify as gay and lesbian since I was in high school over 35 years ago. More recently, in our skating, skating community, we have had several friends who are lesbian parents. As my daughter graduated from high school, She told us that among her friends, girls were dating girls. We expressed support for them, saying they were always welcome in our home. Then our daughter sat my husband and I down and said, I need to tell you something. I am bisexual. I'm sure she was holding her breath and waiting for our reaction. You know, to be completely honest and authentic here, this is easier to accept when it's someone else's child. But our first and instinctive answer was, we love you no matter what. Nothing can change the love we have for our children, even if we have to wrap our heads around something new. And so... I began a couple years of reading and exploring and opening my mind and heart in a way that has fundamentally changed me as a person. My Christian beliefs and faith have grown stronger as a result of what I've learned, and I want to share a little bit of that journey with you today. First of all, what are all those letters? LGBTQIA2SP+. You have all seen the flags on display in the gathering space this month. It seems overwhelming and may even frustrate those of you without a direct connection. Why are we even talking about this in church? Bear with me. Within those letters, there are two distinctions. Who you love which is your sexual orientation, and who you are, which is your gender identity. Some people love people of the opposite sex. Some people love those who are the same sex. 
Some are open to all genders, and some are simply less sexually inclined. Have you heard the phrase, love is love? Oh, it's, it's up there. It doesn't matter if you are loving another man or woman or non-binary person or someone black, white, Asian, or any other diverse classification. Love is accepting to all. So many of these letters are about who you love. The other letters are about who you are. Transgender means that a person's gender identity, gender expression, or behavior does not conform to that typically associated with the sex they are assigned at birth. The person may feel like they are not in the right body, or that they want to feel free to express themselves in a non-stereotypical way. So the letters help provide some identity beyond the heterosexual and binary norms. But beyond these definitions, these are all first and foremost people. They are our children, our friends, our neighbors. Going back to our Christian roots, we love our neighbors by honoring the most core and authentic parts of them. They are not defined by a letter. They have names. Susan, Bob, Matthew, Margaret. Part one of my personal education was gaining some basic understanding of this community. Besides trying to understand sexual orientation and gender identity, I also care very much about how this fits into my Christian identity. Being raised Lutheran, I know that God loves everyone, and so should I. But all the external influences from Catholic friends and evangelical religions made me want to dig further to discover what does the Bible say. I started part two, learning a little more about the Bible. I found some great resources. And, by the way, we have shared a list of resources with you this, uh, this past week, and they are in um, your, your bulletin. Go ahead and explore the list of books and a website and find ways for you to learn more. One of the first resources I found, and this is really important, it's a complete list of all the times in the Bible that Jesus condemns anyone for their sexual identity, their gender identity, or sexual orientation. I hope that list has been helpful. <laughs> Continuing with Bible discovery, do you remember the book of Genesis and the creation story? God created day and night. This is a binary divide. But didn't he also create the sunrise and the sunset? They are both beautiful in-betweens. They are not mentioned in the creation story. God created earth and sea, binary. And he created marshes and bays and everything in between. These were not mentioned either. God created all types of fish and birds and animals, and these were the original three distinct animal classifications in the Bible. But in between types exist. Some birds can also swim. Some creatures with four legs that should only walk on land can also fly. The diversity of animal species is endless. God created so many variations that we still have probably not discovered everything. Since the creation story was written as a set of contrasts, many things were left out. The Bible also says God created man and woman. But like everything else that they created, humans were created with as much diversity as all other things on earth. This is not mentioned. God also blesses humans with both intelligence and curiosity so that we could spend generations learning about the world around us. We call that science. And science is now showing that what previously had been thought of as binary 
is not so black and white after all. Human gender identity comes from not only our outward uh, appearance and chromosomes, but also our hormonal levels and our brain activities and our passions, our hearts. Diversity exists in all things. God created these uniquenesses. Who are we to abandon that which he created and loved? And quite frankly, why do we insist on loving only the binary? Why have we stereotyped God's creations into specific patterns? God sent a rainbow to be a promise that they would not abandon us. Maybe that rainbow is more of a sign than we knew. If parts one and two of my journey have been education, then part three of my journey must be practice. How do I live the love of Christ? What can I do to act on this new understanding of God's love? My daughter reminded me of how scary it is to come out to others. She is a coach who has to be hired by parents. Anytime she refers to her partner, even in just casual conversation, she risks a parent realizing that she is not heterosexual and then pulling their child away. I think we all see the amount of homophobia and transphobia there is in this world. We see it, but our LGBTQ family lives it. I guess I am experiencing my personal coming out as supportive parents have to do, showing myself to be an ally of my LGBTQ family and friends. I am sharing my story and encouraging others to become allies as well. For the first time in my life, I have spent the month of June flooding my Facebook page with pride reminders. I hope that others see this and start being brave enough to at least like the posts and take their own first steps to becoming allies. We as a congregation need to move from an attitude of tolerance into acceptance and ultimately into embracing our neighbors. Some of our Christian counterparts are saying that tolerance is enough. They allow the existence or practice of something that they do not agree with without interference. They may say, you can sit here even if it makes me uncomfortable. That attitude is often paired with the mantra of love the sinner but hate the sin. The thing is, being gay or transgender is not a sin. That discussion is more than I have time for today, and nor am I qualified to engage in that dialogue. But the Bible does not say that having a diverse gender expression is a sin. Many of us are in a state of acceptance, willing to receive someone and accept them into our group. We may express this as, I'd love for you to sit with us. You are welcome here. One way to be accepting is to intentionally respect a person's identity by using their chosen name and pronouns. When someone gets married and changes their name, they are establishing a new identity for themselves. We try hard to learn their married name and honor this new identity. Likewise, when a person chooses a new name and identity because the old one does not fit them anymore, we honor them by respecting this change. You can shed some old practices and start using a transgender person's new name and pronouns. Our challenge is to move the dial a little bit further, from accepting to embracing. Hold someone in your arms and accept and support them willingly and enthusiastically. Treat their name change with the same joy and celebration as a birth or a wedding. They are becoming their authentic selves. Celebrate their new identity by embracing their freedom of expression as a di diverse and unique individual who is created by and loved by God. Show others that you embrace them by wearing a rainbow pin or a button or even a t-shirt. 
How do we live the love of Christ? We are all on a journey of deepening our faith, discarding our old habits, and learning new things. Love is an action verb, not just an emotion. We show we are Christians by our active love. For all of us at Christ Lutheran Church, let's discover together new ways to be disciples of Jesus and live the love of Christ. For those of you who identify as part of the LGBTQIA community, please remember this. Child of God, you are loved. Amen. And walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been here in the same old voice, tell the same old lie. Trying to fill the same old holes inside Well, there's a better life There's a better life If you got pain There's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker If you need freedom or saving He's a prison shake if you've got chains, there's a chain breaker. People search for the light of day and dead of night. We all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We all run to things we know just ain't right. There's a better life, there's a better life If you got pain, there's a pain taker If you feel lost, he's a way maker If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior If you got chains, he's a chain breaker believe it if you receive it if you can feel it somebody testify, testify. if you believe it if you receive it if you can feel it somebody testify testify United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Holy One, we lift our praises to you for your boundless creation. When we look at the faces of your beloveds and the rich and entire lives they lead, it is a cause for celebration because you have named and claimed us all as holy and worthy of love. We give thanks this month, especially for our LGBTQIA siblings who embody the diversity of your kingdom in every shape, race, ability, disability, neurodiversity, age, and more. Help us to see our LGBTQIA plus siblings in your glorious image. God of grace. God of faithfulness, 
Set the face of your church firmly on you. Rooted in your self-giving love, may the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of gentleness, strengthen the earth's ability to heal. Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. Where there are destructive fires, bring rain. Protect homes, habitats, and livelihoods threatened by climate disasters. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of peace, guide all who govern, that they place the good of their citizens above self-promotion. Anoint leaders of nations with your spirit of neighborly love. Protect refugees and all who live under tyranny or conflict. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of kindness, reveal your healing presence to all who are sick or dying. Especially in our midst, we pray for Barb Vlander, Kimberly Dahlin, David Voss, Nancy Olson, Roger Nelson, and all we now name in the silence of our hearts before you. Uphold those who grieve. Support the needs of any who are unemployed, hungry, or have nowhere to lay their heads. God of grace. God of love. Attend to those struggling with addiction, depression, or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems and loving companions as they work toward health, that they may rest in hope and know the fullness of joy in your presence. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of joy, we give thanks for all who have died and now celebrate the inheritance of life in you. Keep their examples of faithfulness always before us, that we trust your promises in life and in death. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. And now hear the words of institution. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. The table is set. All are welcome.
The God of peace bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of a gospel song. Once you choose it, you can't lose it. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I've got an old church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing and a pen restored. No, there ain't nothing gonna mountains that I can't climb. Oh, you are with me, never leave me. There ain't nothing, ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I've got an old church fire song in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation in I got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. It's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing because I've 